Hello my friends and welcome. Here is the story of how the Normans came to Ireland, and tried to destroy our Irish culture, over the next 800 years. In the 12th century, there were many warring clans in Ireland. Each clan had their own king. The most powerful king was known as the High King. In order to become High King, a king had to fight against other powerful kings. Sometimes the King of Connacht would win, other times it might be the King of Leinster, Munster or Ulster. These constant fights meant that kings had many enemies. The reason the Normans first came to Ireland, was in fact, due to this fighting. In 1169, a group of Norman soldiers and knights, arrived in Wexford, to help the Irish King of Leinster, Dermot McMurrow. They were invited by Dermot to help him fight his enemies and regain his kingdom in Leinster. Dermot particularly wanted to defeat Tyr Nan O'Rourke, the ruler of Brefkney, now Roscommon, and Rory O'Connor, the King of Connacht, because they had joined armies and had forced Dermot out of his kingdom. Dermot knew that there were Norman knights and soldiers in England, and he invited them to Ireland to help him. He first had to get permission from King Henry II, who at the time was the King of England, and also the King of Normandy, in France. In 1170, a Norman lord called Richard de Clare, nicknamed Strongbow, came to Ireland from Wales. Strongbow brought archers knights and horsemen with him, and helped Dermot to capture Waterford and Dublin. Strongbow later married Dermot's daughter, Eva. In 1171, when Dermot died, Strongbow became the King of Leinster. This meant that by 1170 AD the Normans had taken over much of the east of Ireland. King Henry II, the Norman King of England, came to Ireland in 1171. He allowed Strongbow to keep the rule of Leinster and he gave the Kingdom of Meath to another lord called Hugh de Lacy. Many of the important Irish leaders were afraid that they might be attacked by the Normans, so they made friends with King Henry II, and agreed that he would be their overlord and protector, in return for certain deals and promises. King Henry left Ireland in 1172 but called himself the Supreme Lord of Ireland. The Norman lords soon took over some of the lands belonging to the Irish clans, they were able to keep control because they had good weapons, such as crossbows, and were well protected by the armor they wore in battle, and also by their castles. They built their castles on high ground, which were initially made of timber and later made of stone. These strong fortifications made it difficult for Irish clans to attack the Normans. They mainly had control on the east of Ireland, but never conquered the whole country. One of the most important Norman castles was in Trim County Meath, where Hugh de Lacy lived. Trim Castle was the main headquarters of the Normans in Ireland. Some other Norman lords were also very powerful and built other large castles such as the one in Carrickfergus, which was owned by John de Courcy. The Normans invited poorer people from England and Wales to come to Ireland and live on their new lands. They wanted these workers to grow crops and pay them rent. The Normans were Christians and built many cathedrals. These cathedrals were usually built in places where there was already a monastery. However, the Normans also established their own new monasteries, which were much larger than the earlier Irish ones. They also tried to build towns such as Carlo and Carrickfergus. They built walls around the towns to prevent attack. These walls had gates that could be closed. They also had towers for lookouts. Other Norman families soon arrived, and many new names were introduced. For example Fitzgerald, Fitzmaurice, Power, and Prendergast. These Norman surnames seemed strange to Irish people, as most Irish names began with O, which meant, from the family of, and Mac, which meant son of. Many Normans began to speak Irish, to marry Irish people, and to take on Irish customs. In 1366, the Normans were forbidden by their king in England to speak in Irish, to dress like, or to adopt Irish customs. These laws became known as the Statutes of Kilkenny, 
However they failed to stop Normans from adopting Irish traditions or from marrying into Irish families. Some powerful Norman Irish families grew up in Ireland, such as the Fitzgeralds of Kildare, and the Geraldines of Munster. The Normans used English law when it came to inheritance. This meant that the eldest son always was next in line to take over from his father. Under Irish law the clan had to agree on the next leader. This meant that there were often quarrels within families. These quarrels were sometimes worsened by the fact that the English government would have supported the oldest son, while the clan might have supported a younger sibling to become leader. By the 14th century there were two dominant old Irish cultures in Ireland. In the countryside, the Irish native Gaelic culture was predominant, while in the bigger coastal towns like Dublin and Waterford, there was still a strong Norse culture. Overall, the Gaelic, Irish-speaking culture predominated. The Gaelic culture was mainly based around cattle and pastoral farming. It was a family-based system where the Taoiseach, or local chieftain, ruled over his clan, and had a large degree of control within his local territory. Disputes with neighbors were often managed through a system of laws known as Brehin law. Fostering was a common practice and cattle raids were frequent. Anglo-Norman culture was quite separate to these two Irish cultures and remained so for much of the Middle Ages. It was a feudal system, where the king provided protection to his vassals based on certain obligations such as the provision of knights and foot soldiers. It employed common law practices and property rights, with a strong focus on sheep rearing, and tillage farming. It was a mercantile semi-urban culture with towns, mayors, guilds and markets. The two systems were at loggerheads with each other from the very beginning. Although nominally the Anglo-Normans had control over most of Ireland, large parts of the country were outside the king's law and, as the Middle Ages progressed, more and more territory was lost to Gaelic warlords and former English magnates, who had gone native. They increasingly adopted Irish customs, clothing and legal practices. By the 15th century, most of Ireland was outside English control, with only a small area of the country. The Dublin Pale, still recognizably English in nature. In essence, Anglo-Norman culture didn't really combine with Irish culture. It was assimilated into it. Most of the great Anglo-Norman families that still existed at the end of the Middle Ages were recognizable Irish in manners, language and customs. And that my friends is the story about how the Normans tried and failed to force us, the fighting Irish, to lower our shields and surrender our ships. We never allowed them to add our biological, nor technological distinctiveness to their own. And in fact, it was their culture in the end, that did to adapt to service us. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.